country. We're at a sold out Dolan Arena in Fresno for an NIB second rounder. It's Michigan State, the last Big Ten team left in the postseason against the 21 and 10 Fresno State Bulldogs. And hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Bush, along with Larry Farmer. Thanks for keeping us company. Jerry Tarkanian was out of coaching for three years, but he's back. He's at his alma mater, and Larry, he is winning again. He certainly is. You know, when Coach Tarkanian was at Long Beach State, he used to walk the ball up the floor, play a 1-3-1 zone. He went to UNLV, man-to-man -man press, ran all the time. Now he's here at Fresno State. They like to shoot the three. Yeah, and what Michigan State is most concerned about tonight are those Bulldog Bombers. Well, they certainly have them. You know, when you talk about Kendrick, uh, excuse me, when you talk about Dominique Young, Dominique Young on the ball averages about two steals per game. He shoots just under 11 three-point shots per. If you allow him to get in the zone, he can really hurt your defense. Kendrick Brooks. At 19 points a game, the leading scorer, he's a slasher. He can also get to the front of the rim. And Michigan State is now carrying the torch for the Big Ten. Will the fire keep on burning? We'll find out. Tip-off is coming up. At what do you really know about Congressman Cal Dooley? Well, he voted to tax Social Security benefits against the death penalty where there is reckless disregard for life and against the balanced budget amendment. That's not all. Dooley opposes term limits and welfare reform, supports gays in the military, and even opposes notifying parents when teenagers seek abortion. There is an alternative. Republican Trice Harvey, the conservative choice for Congress. I just want to talk to you a little bit about the Swanson Barney Automotive Group. You know, I've been dealing with them for a few years now. In fact, I bought three cars from them. And every time I've dealt with them, I've dealt with good folks. Michigan State, and time now for the starting lineups brought to you by Wolverine. For the Spartans, their leading scorer is Quentin Brooks, the 6'7 senior. Very talented on the offensive end, averaging 16 points per game. The junior, John Garavaglia, who's been put in the lineup tonight for first-year head coach Tom Izzo to add some experience. And for Jerry Tarkanian of the Bulldogs, 6'10 junior Rasan Smith, will have his hands full tonight with a much stronger Spartan team. And Tark has added number 24, Darnell. That's how you pronounce it, Stamps, who should help on the boards. Tark told me his biggest concern is how much stronger Michigan State is than his Bulldogs. Fresno State in white. Michigan State in the green, and we're underway. Fresno State. And this is Dominic Young out front. Likes to put it up from three-point range. Kendrick Brooks also, number 50, will be watching him. That's him underneath for a couple. And that's about as patient as you will see Fresno State in their half-court offense. Good ball movement that time, and that shot made available by virtue of a nice baseline screen. Out front for Michigan State, Bethea to fight. What Michigan State will try to do is take it inside, but Young. The steal pulls up from three. Off the mark and the rebound to Brooks and the Spartans. A lot of differences between these two teams. Fresno State likes to run the ball. They like to shoot the three. Michigan State will plot along and will try to get the ball down low. Carvalho misses. Fight the rebound. Loose ball controlled by Fresno. And Stamps. Gets it up to Young. And that's why it's so very important for Fresno State to really get out and pressure, apply a lot of pressure to the ball, make it difficult for Michigan State to make their entry passes from the top to the sides, and that negates a lot of the things that Michigan State like to do and getting it inside. Brooks underneath, and he's walking. Fresno State coming into this game with a record of 21 and 10. They average 80 points a game. Michigan State, 16 and 15. And they average just over 61 points per game. So you can see the contrast there. Down low. And another turnover early. Michigan State turned the ball over more than 100 times than their opponent this year. And Young fouled by Brooks. 
Fresno State turned up the pressure defense in round one of the NIT. They went on a 20-2 second-half run to blow past Miami of Ohio and squeeze out a victory 58-57 into the game now. The man they call Gumby, James Gray, from Inglewood, California. Jerry Tarkanian in his first year at Fresno State, 32nd year as a head coach. And Young missed the free throw. Young a 69% free thrower. You know, I, I found in watching this basketball team, Dominique Young, as he concentrates and as there's more on the line for ball game, he becomes a much better free throw at crunch time. And this is Ray Weathers. Interesting story about Weathers as he's fouled by Young. Weathers is really the leader on this Michigan State team, but he's sort of playing out of position. He is playing a point guard. He played forward when he was in high school and really has adapted to this point guard position, but their true point guard comes off the bench in Thomas Kelly. And that will create problems for Michigan State, especially with the pressure that you see right now with Young applying to the basketball. You want your point guard to be your decision maker and your distributor, and that's the major adjustment for any point guard coming from high school to college, much less a forward coming from high school to college. 18 on the shot clock. Weather puts it up. Fight for the board. Fresno State will get the ball. Tom Izzo. 41 years old in his first year as the Spartan head coach, 16th head coach in Spartan history. But he's a longtime Spartan. Joined the Spartan staff back in 1983. Worked under Judd Heathcote for many years. Now getting a chance to run the show. I thought it was interesting, Coach, in those comments about moving over one seat and how much different that was. Yeah, and Brooks. Hits it. Four points now for Brooks and a 5-0 lead for Fresno State. That's why Brooks is so difficult to defend. He's got great range on his shot, and when you play out on him, he's excellent at putting the ball on the floor. And Weather breaks the ice for Michigan State. Michigan State, very strong team. They'll take it inside. Izzo, Tom Izzo was telling us earlier today, Vance misses. Smith fights for the rebound. Out of bounds for Fresno State. Tom Izzo said that critical tonight for the Spartans will be their transition defense. Being able to get back in this running game of Fresno State. Well, Michigan State will, of course, try and pound the ball inside with where they're at a disadvantage at the point guard position, the big guard position, and the small forward position. It's quickness. Ray from way outside missed it in Weathers. The board for the Spartans. Michigan State showing a 3-2 a, a zone on the inbounds. They will at times play that 3-2 zone, but their, their, their main defense, of course, is man-to-man. Bethea missed the save. Michigan State can reset. Fike. He's got a nice little jump shot. First two points of the game for Jamie Fike. Big guy, six foot nine. But he's not afraid to go outside and hit the three-pointer on occasion. And you saw from that offensive rebound, Michigan averages about 11 offensive rebounds per game. And when you are a good offensive rebounding team, oftentimes you get four players going to the offensive board. That also leaves you vulnerable to that defensive transition. Down goes Smith, but he is fouled by Bethea. First foul on Bethea. And there's a timeout on the floor. Fresno with a one-point lead over the Spartans. We're coming back. Now you watch Rashawn Smith, number zero in the white. He and Jamie Fike, number 30, are going to get entangled on the inside. Now, Smith gets about three offensive rebounds per game. Jamie Fike not having any, any of that rides him out of bounds. Now, it's a good idea to box him out, put a body on him, but you've got to get one bump and then let him go. In his last game, Smith, seven points, six rebounds, and five blocks. He missed nearly all of last season with a stress fracture in his leg. And he had a school record 66 blocks this year. He loves to get up and reject. From Oakland, California. Fresno State with a one-point lead. 
And the basketball. Young to inbound. Out top to Gray. Really a three-guard offense for Fresno State with Gray, Young, and Brooks. And any time that ball has been inbounded on the baseline, immediately Michigan State's gone to that 3 2 zone defense. The fight for the rebound. Gray gets it. Young, the three-pointer misses and fights the board. Michigan State will run on occasion. Underneath, this is Smith, the freshman. Antonio Smith. And Michigan State with their first lead of the game. That was just a nice extra pass. Antonio Smith doing a nice job of taking his time on the inside. Getting himself set, knocking down that easy shot. Fresno State trying to go inside. Gray to Smith for two. First two points of the game for Rasan Smith. And that's just pure hustle. Fresno State gets about 12 offensive rebounds per game, not because they're a, a big, physical, powerful team, but they've got players that assume the shots are missed, they've got quickness, and they get to that offensive board for those putbacks. Kelly, number three into the game. He's the two-point guard in this Michigan State offense. Fight misses the baseliner, the battle underneath, and Brooks handcuffs Antonio Smith. Smith was fouled. And you see Gumby right there on the drive, and that's the penetration that moves the defense, it swallows it, it brings the defense to him, and that opens up Rashawn Smith on the weak side. Penetration will collapse the defense, and if you make the extra pass, oftentimes on the weak side, you get an easy shot. 14 20 to go, first half. Second round NIT, Fresno State and Michigan State. Fight for three. Missed it. Garvalia with the rebound underneath, and then he steps out of bounds. John Garvalia. This guy was Mr. Basketball in high school in Michigan in 1993, and Tom Izzo put him in the starting lineup. Tonight, he has been coming off the bench most of the season. But he's got some experience, and he's been playing well lately. Fresno State with a chance to increase their lead. Nearly turn it over. Gray fights for it. They call this guy Gumby. Because he's sort of like rubber. Being able to dive all over the court getting the ball. Eight on the shot clock. Young for three. Falling away. Missed it. Spikes the rebound. And so the tandem of Young and Brooks. The best three-point shooting tandem in the country, struggling early. And Michigan State taking advantage on the board. And the foul, this time on Stamps. And Michigan State will run a high pick and roll. And because Jamie Fike, number 30, is a good outside shooter, instead of picking and rolling, he steps back. But when he hesitated to catch and take that shot, oftentimes when a shooter does that, really doesn't get his rhythm going, and that's why a shooter can miss wide open shots. But that's certainly a shot that Fike will be available to make if he just concentrates and knocks it down when he first catches the ball. Now, Fike is six foot nine inches tall, but he'll play sort of like a Bill Lambeer type of center. He likes to shoot from the outside. And he's got a nose for the board. Brooks rejected. Young fighting with Brooks still, and Brooks called for the foul. Talking to Coach Izzo, he's really concerned about having turnovers occur, especially turnovers on the perimeter. But you see there is a shot blocked right there. Now the ball gets tipped. Dominique Young has the ball, and if he can get around number 40, Quentin Brooks, it's going to be a three-on-two fast break. Probably a good foul. Spartans go back to their man-to-man -man defense. They've been switching it up a little bit. We know it's good early on in the ball game, especially when that ball is being inbounded on the baseline to play a little zone early to see if you have any success in the zone. If it doesn't work, you stay man-to-man. -man. First two points for Darnell Stamps of a three-point Bulldog lead. Michigan State, they're coming off a 64-50 win over Washington last week. Everything clicked in that game. Well, not everything. They didn't hit the three-point shot. In fact, it was just the second time in 110 games they didn't get at least one three-pointer. Brooks, 
Air ball. Underneath, though, Smith fighting for it. And Fresno State banging the board. And that's what you're concerned about. First of all, if you're Michigan State, you've got to convert those easy putbacks. You've got to make those shots. Smith with the running hook. Four points now for Rasan Smith. And a sold-out crowd here at Selland Arena in Fresno. And the foul on Young likes what they're seeing. They were actually scalping tickets for this game. An NIT game, second rounder between Fresno State and Michigan State. And Rasan Smith has Fresno State on an 11-6 lead. We're coming back. 12 minutes to play in the first half and the Bulldogs with a five-point lead and there's more NIT action tomorrow night 7 o'clock Alabama they rolled over Missouri last night they'll be at South Carolina and then one of the surprises in the NIT Illinois State they play Tulane Tulane rolled over Minnesota last night NIT action the quarterfinals tomorrow on ESPN and they love the tart here in Fresno is alma mater what does Jerry Tarkadian mean in Fresno? Attendance is up 20%. They've had nine sellouts more than the past four years combined. Garbalia. So Michigan State with a play in the timeout, setting up John Garavaglia. And the lead for Fresno State down to three. The Michigan State offense, they will set a lot of back screens, and that was a screen that was set right near the top of the key. There was no switch or bump on it. McCullough, first two points of the game for Darnell McCullough. <laughs> Kelly, he pounded out front by Gray. Fights for three, missed it. I'm not sure Tom Izzo wants him taking that shot from out there, Larry. And, and certainly not that quickly. If you're going to settle for that long a shot, get it later in the possession after you made Fresno State play some defense and burn up some of that energy they're going to use in that transition game. Gray called for steps. And here's the inbound play. You watch number 25, Gravalle. He's faked away. He's gotten that little back screen, and then he cuts toward the basket. That's why on the help side, you have to have great communication. You either switch that if it's a big on big type screen. If it's a big on small, you bump that big guy so he's not allowed to get to the basket freely. And Swipe comes out. Tom Izzo puts Ray Weathers back into the game. You saw the turnovers. Michigan State holding steady. <laughs> Kelly. And the tip in by the freshman, Antonio Smith. Four points now for Smith. Smith very fortunate at that time, as you see Michigan State going back to a zone. Anytime you get dribble penetration, the natural instinct for your inside players is to move over, rotate, and help. And if you don't get help down on that help side, what happens is either there's a nice little interior pass for a shot or the offensive rebound. Brooks for a three. Smith the board. <laughs> Six points now for Rasan Smith. And we're halfway through the first half of action here in Fresno. Weather rejected by McCullough. That's what you call good on the ball help defense. Weather's beating his man, getting him up in the air, and then able to... The defense able to rotate over and take away what would have been a wide open 12 foot shot. But Fresno State turns it back over. Garbali. Left hander no good. McCullough has the Bulldogs on the run. Young. Back to McCullough. He lost the handle. Michigan State the other way. This is Kelly. Three on one. In the weather for a couple. He blew the layup. Fresno State with back-to-back -back turnovers in situations where their defense gave them opportunities to score. The bucket and the bruise.
Smith fouled by John Garibaglia. And Smith has made a home on the low post, but he gets this one because he runs the floor, makes himself available from that nice kickout pass from Dominique Young. He's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> Big smile on the face of Rasan Smith. He now has eight points as he goes to the free throw line. Brandon Baki will come into the game. Kendrick Brooks will check out. Tart, a lot more substitutions in this game than he had in round one against Miami of Ohio. He only went seven deep in that game. He told us today at practice that he hopes to play about ten players in this game. Well, it was funny when you asked him that question because he said, am I not thinking out all play thin? Yeah. But he's very comfortable in playing seven or eight. But when you press and you play that tough, solid man-to-man -man defense, and certainly in this ball game, the pressure is going to be imperative to taking Michigan State out of what they like to do, and it's pound the ball inside. You've got to play more than seven or eight players. Wholesale substitutions now. You're looking at Ari Stanley into the game. He's the biggest player on this Fresno State team, 6'10 and a half, but 270 pounds. Fresno State, their biggest lead of the game at seven. Garvalia is the back out to Kelly. They worked a lot of plays in this Michigan State offense. Spent a lot of time on those plays in practice today. Kelly hits it. Kelly, the sophomore out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Where he's replacing a great one. Eric Snow. That's 13 assists the other night for the Sonics. He's now in the NBA. Great point guard for Michigan State. First two points for Brandon Bakke from Puyallup, Washington. Bucky already graduated. He redshirted, so still has a year of eligibility, but he graduated with a degree in history doing his student teaching now. Did a little teaching on that play. <laughs> Come to school. Kelly. Getting this offense. Now being double teamed. Spike. Bethea driving on Terdanke. Rejected by Stanley. And goaltending called on Paris Stanley. Now, Fresno State, they changed their defense. You saw right there, Baki runs at Jamie Fike to take away that jump shot opportunity, and he made good basketball rotation. Team trailing by five with 7.46 to go. And for the match up breakdown on the NCAA tournament, you got to watch March Madness, the Sweet 16. That's tonight at 12.30. We've got Mike Tirico and coaches Tom Penders, Jim O'Brien, and Ben Brown. They're going to focus on the Southeast and East Regionals. And then tomorrow at midnight, Oklahoma coach Kelvin Sampson joins Penders and O'Brien for a look at the Midwest and West Regionals. We're out west tonight here in Fresno. The Bulldogs. Leading at 19-14 over Michigan State. Last team left in the Big Ten Conference in college basketball's postseason. Five teams in the NCAA tournament left down. Young misses the three. Bethea, the board. And then Wisconsin and Minnesota going down last night in the NIT. Coach Tarkanian talked today about the fact that his team's still playing in a postseason tournament and of course utah the other representative of black having moved on to the switch 16 they've got a tough match up with kentucky yeah a little tough <laughs> fresno state beat utah twice this year they swept the season series kelly garbalia Bethea for three and stanley the rebound stanley and fight each time down the floor really locked into putting bodies on each other now they're doing it in such a way each man making a legal play but each time down the floor there's a lot of contact between those two stanley working on fight the bruisers stanley misses and fight we get it to kelly getting instructions from tom izzo as he slows things down heading up court three stanley at, at 270 very quick graceful move for a big man that time 
And from behind, Garvalia into the game is Garrett Turdengi from Germany. Doesn't play a whole lot, and now he'll come out. Nebraska beat Washington State tonight, 82-73. So they'll meet the winner of this game, Michigan State and Fresno State. And that game will be on Friday, and the winner, of course, of that matchup advancing to New York in the NIT Final Four. That's a good win for Nebraska. Certainly Mark Henderson, first team all Pac-10 this year, player that everyone says the scouts at least that he will be a first round draft choice yes and Bucky is fouled by Kelly first foul on Kelly Tom Izzo the coach of Michigan State a win tonight and he'll become the winningest rookie head coach in Spartan history Find John Bennington who won 17 games back in 1965-66 stop Fresno State. It's interesting, Larry, we talked about it at the top that Fresno State's game was shooting beyond the arc, but they're bruising inside with the Spartans. Well, they haven't been able to hit their three-pointers. <laughs> you take what, what you're doing well at the moment, and so far, the perimeter players of Fresno State not really getting those clean looks in the half-court offense. They've had some, but they haven't knocked them down. But where Fresno State also likes to get those shots from behind the arc are in transition. They haven't had that many fast break opportunities to shoot the three. So when that happens, take some time off the clock, run your offense, and see if you can get the ball a little bit closer to the basket. We've got an injured official here. That's Dick Cartmel, who limped over to the sidelines, appeared to have twisted an ankle. And so there is an official timeout on the court as they're checking on Dick Cartmel. The NCAA Women's Regional Semifinal starts Saturday afternoon here on ESPN. Number one, Louisiana Tech against number nine, Texas Tech. Followed by number 11, Virginia, and sixth ranked Old Dominion. Then Saturday night, 12th ranked Vanderbilt against Iowa. Auburn and Penn State and third ranked Stanford going up against Alabama. And then there's more basketball on the deuce. Tennessee, Kansas, Stephen F. Austin in Georgia and Connecticut and San Francisco. And so Dick Cartmel is limping off the court and he's being taken to the locker room. I'm not sure if they have an alternate here in the building or not. Your referee is Richard Ballesteros. Jerry Scott is also alongside. But Dick Cartmel now going to the bench. And they're going to go with two officials. Richard Ballesteros just came over and in emotion. He said a strained tendon. So after Richie conferred with both coaches explaining the situation, we'll play with two. Richard Ballesteros for many years considered one of the top officials out west. McCullough underneath the bucket and the foul. The foul on Anthony Mull underneath. Darnell McCullough is a traffic player. You see right there, he does a nice job of backing the defender, getting him closer to the basket. So when McCullough catches the ball, he's actually set up that shot. So he's got about a four-footer at the time of, of possession. Darnell McCullough at the free throw line. He's got four points to know, have a chance to convert the three-point play. He's a 6'5 junior from Oakland. This is a guy who was so excited about the season starting. First-year head coach Jerry Tarkane, and he slept in the gym the night before the first practice. <laughs> I got excited myself. <laughs> I Not that excited. excited. <laughs> I never did that. Missed the free throw. Mull into the game now, and he's walking. Now, you know, for, for many years, this game was played with two referees officiating, and as long as these two referees 
their mechanics are proper. You get one baseline, one side, the out official, and they'll run up and down the floor. They should always be in position to make the necessary calls to keep this basketball game under control. Stamp lost the handle. And a five feed from Young. Should have been a couple, and uh, Fresno State with a seven-point lead. Michigan State's got to be careful because Fresno State is the type of team that can go on a long run, and Coach Izzo was worried about that, stopping a Bulldog run. They went on a 20-2 run and beating Miami. Young. On the steal in the bucket. Three points now for Dominic Young. And a 20-second timeout called by Tom Izzo. Dominique Young, 65 steals on the year. We mentioned earlier, he's averaging about two a game. Now, he's got two fouls in this ball game, so he's got to be careful, but really timed that out well, anticipated where he thought the dribble was going to go, and then used his quickness to jump out and surprise the ball handler, steal it, and then, of course, convert it to the other end. Young with two steals already. You know, this is only the second meeting between these two teams. The first meeting back in 1983, also the second round of the NIT, and at home, the Spartans lost... 72-58. Look at some of the players who played in that game. Ron Anderson for Fresno State, Kevin Willis, and Scott Skiles. Sam Vincent also on that Michigan State team. Fresno State won it 72-58, and they went on to win the NIT championship that year. Bernard Thompson also played for the Bulldogs in 1983. <laughs> Kelly tried to feed Fike, and he threw it away. Fresno State with their largest lead of the game, Larry. And it was a good idea. Thomas Kelly and Fike on the same page. They ran a nice little up and then go play. When you try and make that pass so far out, you see the seven turnovers from Michigan State. You've got to put a lot of distance on that basketball. And a lot of things can go wrong if that's not a short, crisp, precise pass. Yeah, Michigan State last in the Big Ten in turnover margin. Minus almost four per game. on the shot clock, Smith. And Smith, the rebound. Antonio Smith, the freshman. He's playing a lot more this year. He's got four rebounds already. Antonio Smith, as a freshman, played a lot more than anybody expected him to play. He's been in the starting lineup lately, though he did not start tonight. 6'8", 235. He's your traditional, almost prototype, Big Ten forward. Fight for the loose ball. Stamp. Smith, the freshman, and he fouled. McCullough called for the foul. You watch the action right there. Now, there's a loose ball. Now, the mistake on this play is Stamp saves it, but he saves it at the wrong end. Anytime you go after a loose ball like that, you want to throw it towards your basket. You save it towards your opponent's basket. More than likely, you're going to give them an opportunity to score. And so Antonio Smith will go to the line. He's the freshman from Flint, Michigan. His brother, Fernando, plays for the Minnesota Vikings. A little distracting, don't you think, Larry? <laughs> How'd you like to shoot into that sea? of waving arms. Well, you've got to focus and as a free throw shooter. You want to concentrate on the front of the rim and only see the front of the rim and try and put the ball right over the top of it. Pretty good for a freshman. <laughs> There's a timeout on the floor. Fresno State leading the Spartans 23-16. At the Russell Defensive Driving School, they teach a course called Street... 16 lead, and coming up at the half, our halftime report with Steve Levy. He'll have NIT highlights, an update from the NBA, and the Blues, the St. Louis Blues, who got Wayne Gretzky just a couple of weeks ago, just keep on trading. The official, by the way, Dick Cartmel, as they pulled left Stanley for a couple, and his return is doubtful. So we're going with two officials in this game, Richard Ballesteros and Jerry Scott. And it's a nine-point Bulldog lead. The winner of this game 
will meet Nebraska. They beat Washington State 82-73. The weather struggle. Smith is walking. And now a foul has been called on Gray. Well, you see Antonio Smith, number 13, right there. Now, he's locked up, getting after that rebound. Nice up fake. And Gumby Gray does reach in, number 52. Easy call. Jerry Scott, the one official, called it walking, and then Richard Ballesteros said the foul on Gray. And Smith hits the free throw. Antonio, he's just a freshman. But he doesn't seem to be bothered by all that activity behind the backboard. Very poised, and this is his fourth free throw of the game. Coming into this game, the last six, he'd only attempted one free throw, and that tells you at 6'8", 235, he had really not gotten in the trenches and been battling, but certainly in this game, he's making his presence felt, and Michigan State will need him to do so. About two and a half minutes for the half. Fresno State... Occasionally seems like they're about to put away the Spartans. The Spartans keep coming back. And Stanley, four points now for Karee Stanley. Got a nice little turnaround baseline jumper. You look at that body and you think drop step power, trench player. But he's got a nice touch and he's capable of stepping off that block if you can move him off the block or if he decides to step away from it and shoot that turnaround jumper. Weathers to fight. And he muscles in for two. Four points now for Jamie Fike. Fike just relentlessly working on that baseline without the ball, setting screens, and just making himself available to either catch those little interior passes or to get on that offensive board. Gray for three. And Fike and Stanley battle for it, and Fike is called for the foul. Couple of bruisers down underneath. And that's the second foul on Fike. Boxing out on the inside. Well, we told you at the top about the three-point tandem of Kendrick Brooks and Dominic Young. They have been absolutely sensational this year, shattering the record for trays here at the school. 203 between the two. And yet they have yet to hit a three-pointer all game. <laughs> Those two, they've taken 518 this season. That's 156 more threes than the entire Michigan State team. Now Young's 0 for, <laughs> 0 for 4 from 3, and Brooks 0 for 2. And the big guy Stanley gives Fresno State a 9-point advantage. 6 points now for Kareem Stanley. Michigan State would like to lower that deficit before half. Carvalho nearly has it stolen by Gray. You can see why they call him Gumby. His arms really can stretch anywhere. Underneath the battle and the foul on Stanley. What's happening is Michigan State's running a little one out four baseline, and that's allowing dribble penetration. Now, you watch the battle on the inside. Kareem Stanley's going to complain about that because he had a nice angle and he did get all ball up top, but there was contact down low. These two officials doing a very good job of moving around, getting the angles, so not only can they watch the play on the perimeter, but they're also getting good looks on the inside. David Bethea from Elkhart, Indiana. He's got three points. Misses the next one. Fike goes after the rebound, but Kendrick Brooks is there. Brooks only with four points. Young with three and a 20-second timeout for Jerry Tarkanian and Fresno State. Don't forget the NBA tonight. It's ESPN 2's live nightly news and highlights program hosted by ESPN Stuart Scott with former NBA player, coach and scout Brett Carter. NBA tonight, it goes beyond the highlights. They'll discuss strategies, philosophies, player movement, and by the way, if you don't have ESPN2, contact your local cable operator or satellite program provider. A sold-out Selland Arena. Here at home, the Bulldogs have won 14 straight 
in Fresno. 21 and 10 on the year. They finished 13 and 5 in the WAC. That was third behind Utah and New Mexico. Utah into the Sweet 16 now of the NCAA. Nobody is it a three-pointer in this game tonight. Look, changes that. <laughs> And an 11 point Bulldog lead. He must have heard you. And that was a very good 20 second timeout by Coach Tarkanian. Winding down into that last minute, he wanted to make sure that that possession, Fresno State got a good, clean look at a shot, got him organized, and Brooks knocked down the three. Weathers won't get the roll. Garvalia tips for it. Weathers follows. Fresno State. Making the Spartans work for every basket. Shot clocks are off. 20 seconds for the half. Steve Levy coming up with our halftime report. Fresno State with a nine-point lead. Under 10 seconds. You get it down here. You don't want to foul if you're Michigan State. Good pressure on the ball. Brooks for three. Indeed. Fresno State will go to the locker room with their biggest lead of the game, 12 points. Let's take it to Steve Levy for our halftime report. Steve. All right, Mike, thanks very much. So a good one, Fresno State out to prove they were left out of another college basketball tournament. Bad night for three-point shooting all around in our earlier game. Providence went 0 for 23, and coming up in our halftime, We'll have highlights from that first NIT game. St. Joe is a lot happier than Providence was. And then there's NBA action. The pros pro. Michael and the Bulls. Stay tuned. One at home in their last nine NIT appearances. The second half from Fresno State. 